need be, we will omit the glory to Chelsea so if, the, if the regular organist, the appointed organist does not arrive in time for that. Uh, are there special announcements that need to be made before we begin? I'll simply remind you that on uh, uh, February 13th, we're having our Friendship Sunday. It's good to think now about someone that you could invite uh, to this Friendship Sunday. Uh, not, not a regular member at another church, but someone who is unchurched. Um, so give some prayer and, uh, and maybe make an invitation for that special day. Okay. Our, uh, we may uh, pray as the bells are rung for the uh, 30, uh, 33 years our Lord spent in ministry on earth, and then we can sing the opening to him, 523, a word of God incarnate. May the Lord bless our worship.
the truth is not in us.
let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, mercifully look upon our infirmities and stretch forth the hand of your majesty to heal and defend us through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Wait. 
blameless and innocent of great transgressions. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. For just as the body is one and has many, many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For one, for in one spirit you are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, you do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But, but as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as they choose. For all were a single member. <clears throat> if all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think are less honorable, we bestow the greatest honor. And our, <clears throat> and our unpresentable parts we treat with great modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has no com <clears throat> so composed the body, giving great honor to the parts that lack it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now, you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. All are apostles. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the higher gifts. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Physician, heal yourself. 
What we have heard you did at Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his hometown. But in truth I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and a great famine came over all the land. And Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When they heard these things, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath, and they rose up and drove him out of the town, and brought him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they could throw him down the cliff. But passing through their midst, he went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Attempt to 
push him down the hill their town was built on. But in a quiet miracle, Christ passed through them and went away. We have another saying that history repeats itself. One repetition may seem to follow the next. Similar events caused by enduring circumstances like repeated earthquakes in California or Japan. The Holy Scriptures relate a sacred history, the record of God's messages and interventions in human history. And there are themes that recur and repeat themselves which we can trace in the history of God's chosen people. One of these is the ongoing <coughs> rejection of God by his people. Eden, the flood, the brothers who sold Joseph into slavery, the rebellion of Israel in the desert, their demands of a human king, which was a rejection of God as their king. This would climax in the appearance of the very Messiah whose rejection at the hands of his people would cause the sacrifice which would forgive the sins of the world. Thus we can see the rejection of Christ by his hometown of Nazareth as the precursor or part of the rejection of the Messiah by Israel. St. Paul would also experience rejection by various Jewish communities, which caused him to bring the gospel of forgiveness to the Gentiles. Not that Israel is ever excluded from the invitation, for indeed, Paul says, to the Jew first, and then to the Gentile. And for both communities, God called believers, and this continues today, Now let us consider what our Lord endured, both at Nazareth and in Jerusalem when he was rejected. Think of the door-to-door -door salesman who tries to make a living selling vacuum cleaners. His livelihood depends on those sales, and he must endure doors closed in his face, impatient faces as he makes his pitch, and more often than not, turn away without encouragement to carry his wares to the next door. Now there are some people who have a gift. They live for that one person in 25 who actually needs a vacuum. And they can be happy in that calling. But consider the other kind of rejection. That of the father of the prodigal son who loved his boy, cared for him, taught him, and then that son turns around and says, Dad, I'm tired of waiting for you to die. I want my inheritance now so I can get out of this oppressive family and enjoy life while I'm still young. Unlike the salesman who has not invested in the people he calls on, this father has invested his love, wisdom, and values hopes and prayers into this son who now rejects his father's wisdom, love, and values. Did you realize that what concerned the father most about his prodigal son was that son's rejection of his father's God? That's why the father later says, we had to celebrate for this my son was dead, but now he is alive. Now this is my point. Our Lord Jesus was rejected by the people he loved. He came back to Nazareth because he loved them, not because he needed any validation from them. He foresaw that he would be rejected, but he came to plead with them anyway. For Jesus loves even those who reject him. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse 
for my soul. In our day, about half of marriages end in divorce. And many more couples are intimate and then become estranged, one rejecting the other or both succumbing to mutual malediction. This means that over half the people you see are rejected by someone who knew them best, who knew them most intimately. Add to this another quarter of Americans who are estranged from a parent or a child or a sibling. Rejection is practically a universal experience. Rejection by those who know us best. To whom can we turn? We can turn to the one who was rejected by his hometown. Not to mention betrayed by one of his chosen disciples. Denied by another and deserted by the rest. If you and I, who are mere sinners, have been rejected and disdained by people in our lives, how much more the innocent Son of God, who left celestial glory to suffer human rejection, so that He can offer God's own acceptance and love to you, here and now. Now, when you are received into the arms of Jesus, when you have believed the gospel, confessed your sin, received God's forgiveness and assurance of eternal life through baptism and the word, you also receive more. That grace and forgiveness overflows from you to others. Perhaps not to everyone all at once, but you will receive power from above to heal from those who have rejected you as you realize the infinite blessing of being accepted by God, though rejected by the world. You will be empowered to forgive those who have sinned against you, and your life will be defined no longer by those who have hurt and rejected you, but rather defined by God who has made you, redeemed you, loved you, and blessed you. You will no longer be content to abase yourself with whatever sins have preoccupied your life until now. You will recognize what conduct blesses others and brings glory to God and lives sacrificially giving up these sins, giving up these lesser things for the greater things that God has laid up for those who love Him. May this knowledge of Christ's rejection by people He loved console you and enable you to console others tempted to forget that God's love and acceptance outweigh the world's rejection. Amen. And may that peace of God that surpasses understanding keep your hearts and minds in the love and embrace of God through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The hymn of response is hymn 839. We may sit for this hymn.
us our faith in the words of the Nineteenth Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom
that God may strengthen our faith through the word that we have heard. Almighty God, when we are rejected, enable us to find consolation in our Savior Jesus Christ, who was rejected on our behalf so that we might have the forgiveness of sins. Make your forgiveness and acceptance real to us in our lives, more real than the passing rejection of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the mission of the church, that many more may hear the word of God and come to faith. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, so many are in love with the world that ultimately turns their backs and rejects them. Deliver all people, Lord, from faith in these untrustworthy idols. Instead, direct their faith to you, their creator, their redeemer, their sanctifier. Bless the witness of your church throughout the world at this time, that many more may come to a knowledge of the truth and be saved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our nation and our leaders, that, may, that they may be of God's servant for our good. Heavenly Father, our leaders influence so many by their policy and by their example. Give us leaders, Lord, who understand the common good and work for it and embody it in their own lives. Lord, deliver us from mistaking them for perfect people, for gods to be worshipped, but enable us to receive them as your servants for our good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who serve our nation and the armed forces. Lord, we thank you for those who are willing to undergo hardship and danger for our protection. And we ask, Lord, that you would uphold them, these who are listed in our bulletin and many others who serve our nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the troubled in heart or mind who are in need of our prayers. Heavenly Father, there are so many who struggle. We commend them into your hands. Lord, hear, hear us on behalf of those who are in need of particular blessings. Chris, Paul, William, Julie, Bladen, Sarah, Crystal, Melissa, Gail, Denise, Ray, and others that we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick and the shut-in, and those who care for them. Lord, look with favor on the many who are in need of healing. Frank, Lillian, Billy, Rosemary, Gage, John, Hilda, Scott, Jim, Jackie, Gloria, Ruth Ann, Tim, Bonnie, Linda, Gail, Dave, Tia, Nora, Brenda, Jean, Linda, Sydney, Ken, John, Linda, Phyllis, George, Sherry, Donnie, Danny, Kate, Brian, Chris, John, Donna, Joe, Mary, Roger, Sally, Jeff, Linda, Laura, Lori, Pam, and our shut-ins who are listed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those in the family way and those with young children. Lord, look with favor on Brian and Sarah, upon Lexi and Wyatt who are in the family way. Lord, we pray to you that you would bless those who have the care of young children, that they might find the support and encouragement they need from family and friends. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us give thanks and prayer for special blessings received. Lord, we give you thanks for your many blessings to us on this cold winter day. We give thanks for shelter, for transportation, for so many blessings that we take for granted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's ask God's blessing on a particular matter of concern. Lord, we ask that you would console the family of Fred Lang, who passed away on January 15th, especially his widow Sherry. 
that you would comfort those who mourn with the knowledge that because you live, we shall live also. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The communion liturgy continues on page 100. 60 of the hymn. The Lord be with you.
You may stand for the post-community canticle.